Do you have any idea what I have been through today? Audrey, if you don't come back here right now. And see you all small? I'm upset enough already. You're upset? You're upset? I'm the one who's five inches tall! Five inches tall? That's about 13 centimeters. How did he get so small and why is he so upset? Join us on our latest Cinefall episode to find out and be sure to visit our Funday website for more. Due to day lunch, today is Tuesday. Commercial. Popular. I have to wait for Klee. So Hiroshi is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he's in the restaurant of the gift store. So he wants to buy things. Okay, so let's take this chance and listen to the What's up, movie fans? I'm Wade, your cinephile host. Downsizing is a 2017 American science fiction comedy drama film, starring Matt Damon in the lead role. It tells the story of Paul Safranek, who decides to undergo a recently invented procedure to shrink his body so that he can start a new life in an experimental community which he ends up doing alone when his wife backs out at the very last minute. His journey takes him on an unexpected turn after he befriends an impoverished activist. Searching for a way to address overpopulation and global warming, Norwegian scientist Dr. Jergen Asbjørnsen develops downsizing, an irreversible process that shrinks organic material. Five years after this breakthrough, at a global conference, they reveal their achievements. My colleague, Dr. Jørgen Asbjørnsen, will now present his findings. Are you ready, doctor? Yes, I'm ready. The crowd is left speechless. Dr. Aspiansen shares that he's become part of the first group of human test subjects that reduces people to a height of approximately 13 centimeters, drastically decreasing their consumption and waste. This sparks a global sensation. Ten years later, Paul and Audrey Safranek, a financially struggling married couple in Omaha, see Dave and Carol Johnson, who have downsized, at Paul's high school reunion. Rather than the taunted environmental benefits, Dave tells Paul the real reason to downsize is that one's money goes much further when one is small. Downsizing is about saving yourself. It takes the pressure right off, especially money pressure. I'm just not driven and ambitious like the rest of my family. But now Carol and I, we, it's like kings. I'm still living in the same house I grew up in. I mean, Audrey's dying for us to move, but we're really strapped. Paul and Audrey decide to visit Leisureland, one of the fancier communities for small individuals. After the tour, they're convinced and prepared to undergo downsizing. They say their goodbyes to their friends and family, and together they prepare for the procedure. Paul is called up first and goes through the entire process of getting shaven, dentures removed, shrunk, then dentures put back on. Five hours later, it was all said and done. In a recovery room in Leisureland, Paul receives a call from Audrey who says she couldn't go through with the process, and she's leaving him. Can't you understand how I feel? I feel terrible. I let you down, I feel awful. But then, then I realized I was just doing this because I, I was trying to make you happy, and I should have been thinking more about myself. Thinking about yourself? Thinking about yourself? You know you haven't even asked me how I am. One year later, Paul signs his divorce papers. He has moved into an apartment since he could no longer afford to live in the mansion Audrey picked, and is now working as a customer service representative for Land's End. Paul attends Dave and Carol's kid's birthday party, but is visibly unhappy. By the long face, huh? Look around you, buddy. Life is good. <laughs> I made a mistake, Dave. Biggest mistake of my life. Should have stayed where I was. Hey, 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 hey. Look, I know divorce can put a pretty big dent in anyone's self-esteem. And what Audrey did to you was beyond the pale. I mean, I hate her. I, I barely know her. You may not hate her, but I hate her guts. Dave suggests that he moves on and start dating, which Paul says he is. 
During a date, they are disturbed by loud music coming from Paul's neighbor, Jusun, who later invites him to join the party. He rejects at first, but after breaking up with his girlfriend, he decides to join the party and gets completely wasted. The next morning, Paul recognizes one of Jusun's house cleaners from seeing her on the news. You're that uh, woman from a couple years ago, the dissident from uh, Thailand or something? What's your name? Gang Ngoc Lang, Vietnam. Yang Ngoc Lang from Vietnam. Yes, that's right. That's right. And I remember that you you lost your leg below the knee. That's that that's you. Wanting to assist Noklan with a prosthetic leg, Paul goes to her apartment in the slums just outside the walls of Leisure Land where the service workers of the community live. Paul has not thought about this part of the small economy and is shocked by the conditions in the slum. At her apartment, Noklan has Paul try to help her dying friend. When she finally lets him work on her prosthetic leg, he breaks it. You stupid man! You needed a new foot anyway. We'll get you a good one. Is that so hard to understand? Jesus! No, say Jesus, bad way! What, I'm supposed to watch my language? Worse than my mother. I feel sorry for your mother. I'm sure she suffered too much for your fault. So, until she gets a new one, Paul agrees to work for her cleaning service and also help her gather food from around the city to distribute throughout the slums. Dusan, upon learning what Paul is doing, attempts to release Paul from his obligations by taking him to deliver supplies to the original colony for small people. But unexpectedly, Noklan decides to tag along, as she has a standing invitation to visit Dr. Asbjornsson, who had heard about her ordeal. In a Norwegian fjord, Dr. Asbjornsson and his wife board the boats piloted by Dusan's friend, Joris Conrad. Dr. Asbjornsson announces it has just been determined conclusively that due to the positive feedback of Arctic methane emissions, the human race will soon become extinct. Relatively soon, the Earth will indeed purge itself of human life, and God knows how many other species. Do you really mean extinction? What about downsizing? Yeah, yeah, too little, too late. Only 3% of the world has miniaturized. There simply isn't enough time. After hearing the devastating news, Paul and Noklang make love. At the colony, the travelers discover that the next day, Dr. Aspionson is enacting a contingency plan. He and the other colonists are going to enter a large underground vault, and their descendants will emerge when the surface environment stabilizes in about 8,000 years. Dusan and Yoris are skeptical of the cult-like plan and say the extinction will not happen for hundreds of years, while Paul is excited to enter the vault and help with the effort to ensure the future of mankind. He asks Noklan to join him, but she refuses. You crazy, man! Always I know you stupid, now I see you crazy, too! How am I crazy? You heard them. This is the only chance for the survival of our species. That's huge! You want to help people? These are the people that you should be helping. The future of humanity is down that hole. Who you help down there? People here need help, not down stupid hole! The next day, Noklan confronts Paul about their relationship. He says he cares about her deeply. But he has to do this because he believes it to be his life purpose. The group watches their final sunset together and prepare to enter the tunnels. Paul says goodbye to his friends and Noklan and enters. As the door of the vault is closing, Paul changes his mind and runs out just before the door closes. On their way back to Leisureland, Paul tells Noklan he can't believe this will all end someday. Now maybe you understand a little bit how I feel after Survive TV Box. When you know death comes soon, you look around things more close. Back in Leisure Land, Paul continues to work with Naklang in serving the people of the slum and those in need. Their world is not much different from ours. Though we might also be doomed to climate change or other global disasters, their message of doing good for those around us while we can should inspire us to do the same. But we're really strapped. Strapped is an English slang that means not having much or enough money. For example, I'm a little strapped right now, could you help me pay for lunch? Why the long face? A smile makes your face wider, whereas a frown or a sad face makes your face narrower or longer. So when you ask someone why the long face, it's an informal way of asking them what's wrong when they look upset. Too little, too late. 
If you're describing a situation as too little, too late, you're blaming someone for not doing enough to prevent a problem and for taking action only after the problem has become very bad. For example, his efforts to improve his grade were too little, too late. And that's it for this episode of Cinephile. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's make every day a fun day. You stupid man! You needed a new foot anyway. We'll get you a good one. Is that so hard to understand? Jesus. No, say Jesus, bad way. What, I'm supposed to watch my language? Worse than my mother. I feel sorry for your mother. I'm sure she suffered too much for your fault.